Hello and welcome to the Crime Watch Roadshow. For the whole of June, we are live from all over the UK. We're bringing Crime Watch to you. On Monday, we were after your help to find cannabis farms, and thanks to your calls, we've heard of a possible 19 more. And two of the wanted faces have handed themselves in, and we have had several really useful sightings of others. And a man we were after at the beginning of the week for a serious sexual assault was arrested yesterday, and that's thanks to calls to the programme. Let's hope we can do as well this morning. Well, Penny Roberts is in South Wales. Hello, Penny. Morning, Sophie. Morning, Rav Kroiso. And this morning, I'm in Blynavon in the South Wales Valleys, where just two months ago, one single crime affected more than 40 people here when vandals went on the rampage, slashing car tyres. It wasn't until I got to work and I rang the police that I started to really realise the scale of what really had gone on that night. And they just went from street to street in Blenavon, slashing tyres. From the top of the town to the bottom of the town and all the way up to Ford Sound. And I don't know how many tyres were slashed up there. And the burger van man robbed of his takings after a weekend at a music festival. He was attacked by four men. One had a gun and they got away with 45 grand. But first, Sarah and Adrian's wedding should have been the best day of their lives. As they exchanged vows at the altar, thieves made sure they'd remember the day for all the wrong reasons. Here's why. Sarah and Adrian have been planning their wedding day for two years. And on April the 25th, the big day finally arrived. And the cameras were out in force to record their special day. Started getting ready from about half past seven at the hairdressers. Got home, carried on trying to get ready, get other people ready. <laughs> and the photographer turned up about half past ten. And then from there onwards, there was a, a bit of a blur, really. I kept out of the way of everyone. I was feeling really, really jittery. Uh, stomach doing cartwheels. Once, once we were here, Everything just seemed to uh, go into fast forward. Um, all the nerves had gone, anticipation was up there. Had to wait a little while for sales to turn up. The only real thing I can remember from being in the church is uh, when Sarah initially walked into the church, I looked around and had to take a double tape because it's a breath taken away, absolutely gorgeous. But while Sarah went down the aisle, an uninvited guest was calling at their home. At the end of their marriage vows, we all gave them a good round of applause to welcome them as, as man and wife, and it was a very friendly, happy occasion. But their photos weren't the only things being taken. From the church, we went to the Glenaravan Hotel in the horse and carriage. We had a PowerPoint presentation all about me. Um, so after that, we decided just to simply try hiding the fact that he had no hair. It was a really, really good speech. Uh, managed to um, sum me up pretty well. Ma managed to embarrass me, um, as a best man speech should do. Sarah and Adrian. Sarah and Adrian. While they raised a glass, <laughs> others were being smashed. They parted into the night, but the next morning, the hangover was the least of their worries. We're packing the cars up, having a bit of a, a laugh and joke, and then we had a, well, I received a phone call uh, from my parents, um, and I just felt absolutely devastated. Um, it took me a few minutes before I could actually get myself around to telling Sarah. Find out later what the bride and groom discovered when they got home. Also coming up, we're with police on the hunt for thieves who dismantle your car and steal the parts. It's a growing problem and police are taking it seriously. And last December, Matthew Bray heard a woman crying out for help. She was being beaten by a male. Matthew went to her aid, but then the attacker turned on him. He needed a week in hospital, 26 stitches and lost three pints of blood. We'll hear his story later. The first eyes peeled. Do you recognise any of this lot? 
Tesco's in Croydon Road, Beckenham, and these three lads are hanging around the cash machine like vultures. As this elderly gentleman approaches, they check him out. The guy with a maroon top and baseball hat pretends to use the machine. He then walks away. As the victim puts his card in the machine, the youth returns, causing our victim to become confused. While his mates act as lookouts, he then lunges over and takes the card. If you know where they're hiding this morning, call us with names. We're at a BP garage in Peckham, London, and the driver is filling up with petrol. His two female passengers decide to do a little filling up of their own in the garage shop. They nick several bottles of pop and some sweets. Be careful, ladies, that's a lot of e-numbers. If you know the women with the sweet tooth, pick up the phone. Something rotten in the state of Denmark, said Shakespeare in one of his plays. Maybe he should have said London. We're at the Globe Theatre and this group are enjoying a drink. Look at the two men entering on the right of your screen. No winter of discontent for these two. They hover, pretending to talk whilst eyeballing the handbag on the floor. The bloke in the black jacket tries to hook it with his foot. No luck this time as he nearly gets caught. He waits, but he's impatient and blatantly bends down, picks it up and the two walk out. Who are these characters? We need to know their names. We're inside Coral's Bookies in Peckham, London, and this geezer has put money on a sure bet. Or has he? He looks on in hope, but it starts to go wrong, and he's not happy. He rants and raves to other punters before picking up a chair and putting it on a table. It all gets too much for him, and he lobs a chair, causing damage before racing out of the door. Let's raise the odds of finding this gent. Call us if you know his name. Do you recognise anyone? Do call us. The numbers are on screen throughout the show. Now, we have had a staggering response this week. Already your information has led to three arrests. We've had 38 sightings throughout the UK of wanted faces and you've provided 60 names that we've passed on to the police. You've also informed us of 19 potential cannabis farms, a story that we featured on Monday. And on those football disorder offences, you've given us ten names. We've also had sightings of a car that could have been involved in stealing pensioner Anne Croom's safe, which was later discovered in a canal. If you think you know something about a case, then please do not hesitate to get in touch. Earlier in the week, I was at the scene of a vicious knife attack just off Cowbridge Road East in Cardiff. The victim was trying to be a good citizen, but ended up being attacked. He received a 10-inch cut to his face. Now, we still need your help to find his attacker, and we need some names of witnesses. So far, no one's come forward. Perhaps this reconstruction will jog your memory. On the 6th of May, in broad daylight, our victims saw a man acting suspiciously in a private car park. As a good citizen, he decided to see what the man was doing. I thought he was looking at cars which were parked all around. I said, what, do you live here? He said, why are you asking? And then he raised his right hand, in which I could see a knife. And as I tried to get away, I, I lost my balance and I fell off the bike to the floor. With his attacker bearing down on him, the victim was helpless and alone. The man took a string-type rucksack bag and, and he dropped it to the floor next to me. As I slid backwards from him, I picked it up and I, and I threw it at him. But his attacker wasn't quite done with him yet. I know he made contact with the left side of my forehead area, but no, it didn't hurt. I again kicked out of the mail as I was on the floor. I put my hand to my forehead and looked at my fingers, and I could see blood on them. Now the victim knew he was fighting for his survival. He had to get away. The covered area has this gate. The gate was half open, so as I ran through it on Tech Average Road East, I slammed the gate behind me. Now, I know it's shut because the male tried to open the door, but he couldn't open it. Terrified, with blood pouring from his head, 
Our victim was running for his life. Against the odds, he managed to trap his attacker and make his escape. This is the moment he got away captured on CCTV. His attacker is also seen here fleeing back towards the car park. There were some men there who saw me. They could see that I was bleeding, you know, and, and they gave me a cloth. One of the males there was Mr Iqbal. And very shocking for me because it's when I see the blood are all over the place, and it's full shed and towel that full of blood. It's, really, it's very hard time for me. Our victim had, in fact, been slashed in the face, leaving him with a 10-inch cut. The blade had just missed his left eye. Since this incident, he has become very quiet. He's in shock. Every time I had tried to talk to him, every time I tried to chat him up, he is bit down. But I think it will take quite a few weeks before he comes back to normal. That really was a shocking attack. Police do have this e-fit, though. The man we're looking for is described as black and of African appearance. In his early 20s, about five foot eight tall and of slim build, with black, short, slightly curly hair. And we rode away from the scene on a black or grey bike. If you can help, please call, and the number is 08000 468 999. Or you can text us, remember, on 63399. Just text CW, space, and then your message. Don't forget to leave that space, or your message won't get through. Now, if you'd like to remain anonymous, you can call the independent charity Crime Stoppers, and their number is 0800 555 111. You might remember from last week the story of 90 cars in Manchester that were vandalised in one night. Well, unbelievably, we have a similar tale in Blenavon. This time, thugs were slashing car tyres. Here's what happened. It was unbelievable, you know, the money that we've had to pay, and it just um, makes me feel sick to the stomach, actually. We're all going to end up having cameras for outside our houses because we're all afraid to leave anything outside. We just couldn't believe how many had been done. And then when I went to work on the Monday, I found some of my workmates uh, had two cars done as well. First thing you think is, have I upset someone? But it wasn't until I got to work and I rang the police that I started to really realise the scale of what really had gone on that night. This is the popular tourist town of Blynavon. Pretty and peaceful, car crime is barely a problem. On average, there's only one incident per week, but in just one night this April, there were at least 42 offences reported. They just went from street to street in Blenavon, slashing tyres. From the top of the town to the bottom of the town and all the way up to Ford side. And I don't know how many tyres were slashed up there. Inspector Matthew Williams talks us through the slashing spree. We believe the incident occurred between 2.30 a.m. and 6 a.m. on Saturday the 25th of April 2009. In this street alone, the Queen Street area of Blenavon, six vehicles were attacked. In this area, Riverside Drive and surrounding streets, we had 14 reports overnight. Leading up to this area, Tom Mow Road, then up and around to Old Queen Street and King Street, we had 10 reports in those areas alone. To cover this greater size area would have taken the offenders a good couple of hours. The vandals attacked at least 42 cars that night. With up to three tyres slashed on each car, the cost of the damage soon mounted up. It was the sheer scale of the crime that shocked the residents. Well, in this street, there were at least eight cars with the tyres slashed. One of my workmates told me he'd had his car done, then another workmate told me he'd had his car done, and then when I went into work on the Monday, there was another three people I worked with told me they'd had their cars done, one of them had had two cars done. And then um, we was walking home from work, and we noticed a few cars on the route home from work had been done as well. The following morning, and unaware of the vandalism that had struck her town, Naomi Harris set off on her normal drive to work. It was Saturday morning, so it was just another work day for me. I was running late, so I was in a rush. Literally just grabbed my bag and ran out the door. The car was 
an absolute nightmare to drive to hope, you know, that I could get to work and then ring my husband and say, well, the car's not driving right. Naomi's journey to work took her along the remote Abergavenny Road with its sharp bends and steep drops. Although she didn't know why, the steering was getting worse and the car hard to control. I had a van behind me who was constantly flashing me and tooting his horn at me, so I thought something must be wrong. I could smell rubber by that point as well. I got out and had a walk around the car. Then I noticed the tyre had been slashed and it was completely flat and it just stunk of rubber, basically. It was very dangerous because the steering was really hard, so, you know, I could have quite easily swerved over the edge and nobody would have been none the wiser. Everybody would have assumed I was in work until the point when I didn't turn up at work, really. Naomi had been lucky, but after she reported it to the police, her day was about to get worse. I don't know why I thought about it, but because the police had told me how many complaints they had had, the first thing I thought is maybe we should check our other car because, you know, it's not outside my house. It's outside a garage around the corner. So I rang my husband up and I asked him to go and check our car. And within two to three minutes, he was ringing me back to tell me that the car tyres on our car had been done as well. Obviously, the tyres must have put up a bit of a fight on that car because they'd slashed each tyre four to five times, gouging it. So it wasn't a case of, like, they just put the knife in once. They'd really had a good go at it. There's the bus, yeah. The vandals had cost yeah. Naomi and her family £175. It is a fair bit of money for us because it's not something we can budget for. Um, I only work 13 hours a week myself for minimum wage and my husband, God bless him, works all the hours under the sun. Mm -hmm. When you've got a child in the house, they do cost money and it's not something I could budget for, £175. is like, what do you give up in order to pay for that? During the rampage that night, the vandals attacked at least 42 cars and caused thousands of pounds worth of damage but they also endangered the lives of the unwitting drivers. This CCTV footage shows three youths walking in the town on the 25th of April at the time the crime was being committed. Were they involved or were they vital witnesses? Is it you or can you help identify them? We suspect that at least two persons were responsible for slashing tyres in Blenavon that night. An implement was used, possibly a Stanley Life type blade that was strong enough to cut through tyres. It's also concerning the persons are walking the streets carrying these implements. This is a serious crime, and those responsible should be caught. Penny, it's awful what they're doing to those people's cars. Yes, it really is, Sophie, and not surprisingly, people here in Blyan Avon have been really shaken by what's happened. Well, I'm joined now by Chris Wathen, who runs the local garage, and Inspector Matthew Williams, who's investigating this case. Chris, you spent two whole days changing tyres after this incident. What was it like that day back in April? Well, the morning I was coming to work, it was a, like, like a bit of a dream. Uh, there was cars listed to the left, lift listed to the right, and I got to the top of Broad Street and looked across Queen Street, and it was just unbelievable. It was like a scene from the Battle of Dunkirk. Well, Matthew, you're investigating this. Have you ever seen anything on this scale before? We have seen similar spates in other areas, but certainly nothing to this magnitude. Why would anybody do something like this? It seems so pointless, so mindless to do it. It, it is mindless, you're right. Um, we're keen to find out it appears just malicious. It could be to frustrate police and activity in the area. It could be to frustrate and upset the local community. We just don't know at this time. And how seriously are you treating this one? We're treating it very seriously. You know, there were, a lot of families were upset that morning um, and their plans for the day were ruined because of this, um, this malicious act. Um, there were also a number of emergency workers and um, hospital workers that were put off, you know, obviously going to work that morning and were unable to, to get to work because of this, this problem. So it could have caused real problems for the emergency services and health workers and so on? Yes, that's right, yes. Now, you've got some good CCTV footage of three males you want to talk to. What should Crime Watch viewers uh, keep an eye out for? Well, we really want to know the names of the, the males on CCTV captured walking from King Street into Broad Street at around 2.30 that morning. Um, the crimes seem to have been committed between around 2.30 and 6am that, that morning on the 24th to the 25th of April 2009. So we're keen to identify these males and speak to them regarding uh, their activity. So you're looking for names on this one now? Yes, we are, definitely, thanks. Well, let's hope we get some calls. Sophie. Penny, thank you very much. If you do know anything, please do call. The numbers are on the screen right now.
Now, some of our wanted faces. Are you going to know any of this lot this morning? Number one and two are wanted in connection with the kidnap of a lorry driver in North Yorkshire in 2006. He was held at knife point and driven to Merseyside before his load was stolen and the truck was set on fire. They're originally from Liverpool. If you know where they're hiding this morning, give us a call. Face number three, this is Michael Bishop. Police want to talk to him in connection with the murder of Stuart Slade in Brighton last year. Bishop is 24 years old and as well as having links to South England, he has also lived in southern Spain. There's a £5,000 reward. So if you know where he is, give us a call. And finally, number four, this is 47-year-old James Shevlin, who police would like to find. Shevlin was jailed in 2009 on deception offences and has now skipped bail. He is also wanted for questioning about another fraud involving a popular online internet auction site. Have you seen him? If you know where they are or where they're hiding, call or text. The numbers are on screen now. Now, the story of a terrifying robbery at gunpoint. After a busy weekend working at a music festival, a burger van owner arrived home. Minutes later, right in front of his wife and three young children, four men surrounded him held a gun to his chest and demanded the takings. They got away with 45 grand. And DS Rob Kronick is on the hunt for the gang. Rob, good morning. Talk us through what happened. Yeah, good morning, Rav. Um, it was bank holiday Monday, the 25th of August of last year. A horrific incident for the, for the family. A 32-year-old man had come back from the Leeds and Chelmsford V festivals, uh, had driven back to his home address in Trowbridge in Cardiff. And as he had was met on his driveway by his family. His wife was holding their six-month-old baby and her two younger children were there. He was confronted by a gunman who pushed a gun into his chest, demanded he drop the money, which he did, fearing for his safety. His family went hysterical with fear and the gunman, with three accomplices, ran off around the corner. Now, it looks as if he was targeted, doesn't it? They were definitely targeted. They, uh, the culprits knew exactly what time the, the man was coming back. Uh, they knew he would have that amount of money. So there's no doubt this was a planned robbery, and that's how we're looking at it. Now, we've got a still of the suspect's car. What do you know about that? Yeah, we spoke to witnesses following our inquiries initially, and they described a dark-coloured people carrier with sliding doors. We've got footage from our inquiries of a black Vauxhall Sintra following our victim through Cardiff to his home address. We need to know about that car. Now, crucially, we've got some CCTV footage of the offenders. Briefly talk us through that. Yes, the, the footage shows the four culprits, but we've got two descriptions. Firstly is the, the gunman. He's described as being a white male with olive skin complexion. He's got bushy eyebrows and a round face. And distinctly, he's wearing a yellow fluorescent jacket with dark jeans with uh, distinctive zips behind the knees. He is a very large build. The second male, who was wearing a balaclava, was also wearing dark clothing, but distinctly for him, he was wearing black jeans, G-Star make, with the 96 embroidered on the, the left rear of the thigh. We need to know who those men are. We certainly do, Robert. And, and... In addition to the £45,000 they've stolen, it's worth noting and highlighting the fact that these three young children were there at a time. We really do need some help on this one. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you can help us in any way with this case, we definitely need your calls today. Get on the phone. Still to come, it was Sarah and Adrian's big day, but as they tied the knot at the altar, thieves ensured they would remember this day for all the wrong reasons. Right now, though, if you saw a man in the street beating up a woman, what would you do? Not a situation you ever hoped to find yourself in, but for Matthew Bray, that is exactly what he faced back in December. And you joined, he joins me this morning. Good morning. Just morning. tell us what happened. I was in a takeaway in Gillingham, by where I live. Um, I heard a commotion outside, saw a lady and a gentleman running past, gone out to see what the commotion was about, I followed him in a direction that they've obviously gone in, um, asked the gentleman what he was doing after I saw him attacking the female. And he was really Punch going for her, wasn't he? He was. He was punching and kicking her into a doorway of a shop. Um, he turned on me violently, uh, started to be in a struggle. I got attacked by him punching and kicking me. And this is just because you asked him what he was doing? <coughs> exactly. Um, 
I then sort of tried to help the lady after she was crying out for help. I've gone into a petrol station hoping that the gentleman would be picked up by the CCTV cameras. And then after a short time after that, he went away and then came back and managed to catch him in the face with a sharp instrument. Do you know what, what it was? I mean, it's left a terrible scar, hasn't it? It has. Um, I don't know exactly what the instrument was. We think it may have been a knife. Um, and the injuries, I mean, we've got... I'm just going to warn people now, because we've got pictures of the injuries just after the attack, and they're pretty horrific, what, what he did to you. Yeah. Um, I was hospitalised for a week, lost three pints of blood, and I needed 26 stitches by a, a surgeon in a separate hospital. It's, it's just extraordinary, and all you had done was asked what was going on. Was this woman all right? The man has actually subsequently been caught, hasn't he? He's now in prison because he what, bragged about what he'd done. Yeah, he, he was bragging to some friends in a pub. Someone heard him, notified the police, and now he's been sentenced to six years in prison. So you are left, you know, an innocent passerby, as it were, who's just tried to help somebody in need. You are left with this scar on your face, and, you know, it's a horrific thing to go through. In hindsight, or if it ever happened again, would you do it? Would you step in like that? I'd like to say no, but if something happened to someone that was very close to me and that was happening, I'd hope someone would help them, whether that be ring the police or mm. maybe even step in. Well, for your bravery, I mean, you've, you've been rewarded, haven't you? You're going to pick up, tell us what you're going to get now. I've been recommended for a High Sheriff's Commendation Award. Yeah, oh, uh, well, well that very, in very, very, well, congratulations and very, very well deserved, definitely. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much for coming in, Matthew, and telling Thank us you. your story this morning. Rav, it's a really difficult one, this, isn't it? I mean, if you see something like that happening in the street, do you get involved or do you just... Stand by. It is so hard. If someone I cared about was in trouble, I'd love someone like Matthew to step in. It's, it's a gut instinct that so many of us got, but I've got to say the advice has to be phone the police first and foremost. At least they know where you are, the call's logged, and yeah. they can come down and give proper assistance. It's a tough one. Yeah. Now, here's some villains caught in the act on camera. A quiet night out at this Romanian restaurant in London back in October. But things are about to kick off. A fight starts up outside. The thug in the hat batters his victim, leaving him in a pool of blood and with a broken cheekbone. Lots of people saw it, but so far no one's come forward. Who are the people standing outside? And who's this? Two o'clock in the morning at these flats in Farnborough, Hampshire, last August, and this lad is after a cigarette. Some men in a flat nearby say they'll give him one, and they're not kidding. They answer the door with baseball bats and go for him, smacking him so hard they break his arm. Pointless, mindless violence and completely unprovoked. How long till this yob strikes again? Fairham Shopping Centre last September and this elderly lady is going about her daily business. First stop, the bank. She joins the queue and then asks the cashier to withdraw 300 quid. But she's not alone. This man is watching closely. He follows her out of the bank and into Boots next door. Once inside, he makes his move. Joined by three mates, two keep lookout while the rest surround her, squirt chilli sauce in her face, then nick her purse. She's 85. How low can you get? Know them, shop them. And if you recognise anyone, call us 08000 468 999 or you can text us on 63399. Just text CW, space, and then your message. Don't forget to leave that space or your message won't get through. Lots of people already calling. This morning we've had uh, two sightings already of today's wanted faces, the ones we've shown you so far. We've also had a call about a, a man we featured yesterday, the fake Channel 4 cameraman who got away with more than £100,000 worth of equipment. Well, we've had another call about that with a possible name. And also three possible names for those tyre slashers we showed you just a short time ago in Blind Abbey. Please do keep your calls coming. We really do want to hear from you. Now, as wedding bells were ringing out in Abergavenny, thieves were breaking in nearby. They made sure that Sarah and Adrian's big day would be remembered for all the wrong reasons. Watch closely and call if you can help. Sarah and Adrian had been planning their wedding day for two years, and on the day, it seemed like a dream start to their life together. The only real thing I can remember from being in the church is uh, when Sarah initially walked into the church. I looked around and had to take a double tape because it's a breath taken away, absolutely gorgeous.
but while they were tying the knot, thieves were ransacking their home. Well, we've got two laptops missing, we've got two cameras. What was on those were all our pictures. Um, we've got pictures from uh, the weekend we went away and we got engaged in Paris. We've got pictures of holidays, Christmases, um, all gone. As well as the couple's laptops and cameras, thieves stole wedding cards and vouchers given to them in the run-up to their big day. It's the cards and the messages from people that uh, we never got to see um, that uh, I think hurt us the most, wasn't it? It's a horrible thought to say, thank you for your, for your cards and your gift, but I don't know what it was because... Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> As taking it before we've even been able to open it and appreciate their generosity. And even a special gift from a friend didn't escape the thieves' clutches. She made a needlepoint uh, cross stitch, wasn't it? Yeah. With our names and the date of the wedding on, and that had gone. Um, that was really, really <clears throat> distressing because you know someone's put their heart and soul into doing something so personal like that and just gone um, for, no, for no reason. It's not going to be any use to them or anyone else. I just thought it was such an appalling thing to happen for somebody on their wedding day. Um, I think burglaries are bad enough anyway. Um, very difficult to put behind you when your house has been ransacked, but to have it on your wedding day, you're going to remember it probably every time you celebrate your wedding anniversary. The robbery ruined what should have been the holiday of a lifetime. We didn't really have an enjoyable build-up to uh, the honeymoon because instead of having a bit of fun, getting things packed, relaxing, we were having to wash all the clothes again, talk to the security people, try to talk to the insurance company. It's all the things you don't really want to be having to do when you're starting uh, your life together. I think now it's getting to the stage of anger, that uh, especially that we, well, we, the police doesn't court anybody, um, and it's just the annoyance really of the trouble they've caused and the upset. Well, DC Dave Nesbitt is Nisbet from Gwent Police, who's investigating this case, is here. Good morning. Thank you very much Good for morning. joining us. Being burgled is bad enough, but on your wedding day, I mean, do you think this couple were targeted? Um, absolutely. I, I believe that the um, thieves had saw uh, the wedding cars on the drive and uh, took this opportunity to uh, break into the house knowing that they'd be away. That's what makes it so appalling. Yeah, absolutely. How did they get in? Um, I believe they put their hands in through the cat flap and, and reached up uh, and, and done the lock. Uh, to gain access. Which is actually quite common. I mean, people really need to be careful about things like this, don't they? Because it's quite common that burglars get in that way. Uh, absolutely. They, um, they use all sorts of methods to get in. You've seen of, uh, fishing lines um, used to hook up keys and what, take them put them, them through the letterbox or That's something right. like that? That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd give advice here and say that if you have keys in the locks, take them out and remove them so they can't be seen. Right, absolutely, because uh, somebody's going to be after them if they can see them. Yeah. What have they stolen, though? The, a lot of electrical items went. There's um, two digital cameras, a, a Canon and a Samsung. Uh, there's also two laptops, which an Advent and a Toshiba laptop. Mm. Uh, also a Nintendo Wii and a, a Sony sat-nav. So they've obviously got very generous friends and I suppose the thieves are, are banking on that, aren't they? Uh, uh, yes, right. Um, the uh, electrical items were taken. These are the things that are appealing to members of the public. If you've been offered these or bought these, then uh, please get in touch. Do you think that's what they're doing? They're selling them on? Yes. Mm. Um, they don't usually keep stolen property for long. It'll be sold on. Um, and that's what I need to trace. And there were some really personal items as well, that they were given cards and things with their names stitched into them, weren't there? Yeah, there's um, a cross-stitch with uh, Sarah and Adrian, uh, 26th of April 2009. I'd like to locate that. And also um, the wedding cards, uh, which won't mean anything to the thieves, uh, but very sentimental for mm. the, the couple. I'd like to recover those. And it's the sort of thing that would have been probably discarded, as you say. So if somebody has found them in a ditch, in a hedge, whatever, they should definitely tell you about it. Yes, get in touch straight away. I mean, for couples getting married, you know, people are going to know that the house is, is full of presents, really, aren't they? they mm. You've got to be pretty careful. Uh, absolutely. I would say that if you're uh, going away on honeymoon, um, have, some, have the wedding gifts um, brought to the house when you get back. Or uh, during the wedding at the reception, uh, have somebody looking after the wedding gifts. Uh, feast target, this sort of thing. Mm. OK. Well, thank you very much for coming in and joining us this okay. morning. If you can help, please do call. The numbers are on the screen right now, so get dialing. Now, do you recognise any of these faces wanted by the police? If you do, we want you to call us. Number five is this guy. Lancashire police are looking for him. It's Stephen McVitie, and he was jailed for serious assault in July 2007.
He was recalled in November 2007 and hasn't been seen since. He's five foot nine tall, has a heavy build and the name Michelle tattooed on his right arm. Can you tell police where he is this morning though? Number six here is Norman John Rowan and he was originally jailed for assaults in March 2006 at Preston Crown Court. He's now on the run and the police want to find him. He has distinctive tattoos on his right arm also, this time of dogs. Number seven is this chap here, 23-year-old Thomas Badzo. And he was jailed in 2006 for burglary and needs to finish his sentence. Only he's nowhere to be found. He lived in the Bradford and Burley areas and has a heart-shaped tattoo with the word Anna on his right arm. Have you seen him? And last, but by no means least, my number eight is James Robert Hawkins, and police would like a word with him about the theft of farming equipment. Back in April, a cultivator worth £500 was stolen. Now, he has links to the Cates and Hlandin areas of Cardiff. So, if you have information on any of these faces, call us. The numbers are on your screen now. And if you want a second look, you can go to our website, remember, bbc.co.uk forward slash Crime Watch Roadshow. Now, when you park your car, the last thing you imagine is that someone will come along and remove part of it. Well, that is exactly what happened in our next case. After months of searching, Rodri Isaacs felt he'd found the one. When I went down to look at the car, it was really nice, just what I wanted. Nice and sporty, a really nice young person's car. Nice alloy wheels, leather interior. But this happy partnership was to be short-lived. Thieves were targeting his £7,000 Ford Fiesta piece by piece. I was coming out of rugby training, walking across the road, um, and I could see, walking towards the car, that the spoiler had been ripped off. And I didn't, I really didn't know what to think. My emotions were, like, I felt sick, I felt angry to think that someone could have done that. Then when I was getting into the car, I noticed that the front bumper had been ripped off as well. So I walked round to the front of the car to see it and just to find that the pole of the front bumper had been ripped off as well. I was just disgusted. Rodri was left with a huge bill. All in all, buying all the parts and getting them sprayed as well, the same colour as the car, it cost around £800. On the outskirts of Cardiff, police have an Aladdin's cave of bumpers, bonnets, exhausts and engines. These parts have been seized during raids across South Wales because they've been illegally stripped from cars. They buy the salvage car for um, below market value, repair it with stolen parts and then sell it on um, to make a profit. Gangs out for a quick profit are targeting certain types of cars. It depends on what salvage they buy, um, popular cars being the smaller cars, um, Fiestas, uh, Renault Clios, easy to sell afterwards, um, easy to work on. Acting on intelligence, police in Maesteg near Bridgend are on their way to look for stolen car parts and a certain house is on their list. Police! Not a single stone is left unturned during the hunt. We haven't seen to find much at the moment. We're just waiting out for the owner to turn up and then we obviously check the garage and check the outbuildings. Yeah. There seems to be quite a lot of equipment in there, uh, tools and sort of car paraphernalia that uh, we'd be looking at, uh, would like to have a look at. Um, and obviously as soon as we gain entry, just have a quick check around, uh, that will probably uh, conclude the warrant then. Moments after smashing a window to get into the garage, the owner turns up to answer their questions. They find some parts which they want to investigate further. We've had uh, one male arrested uh, on suspicion of theft of a motor vehicle. Uh, the items we were looking for were recovered from the, uh, the outbuilding, the big garage that he's got in the back. Uh, he'll then be interviewed about uh, obviously the items we found here this afternoon, and uh, he'll have his opportunity to put towards us uh, how he's got to come to uh, acquire some of the things that he's got. Obviously, back in Blackwood, Rodri has given up his dream of owning a smart motor. I completely lost all interest in the car. It was because it, it was worrying that it could have happened again and, you know, I could have ended up paying out another lot of money and I just didn't feel right taking the car anyway and leaving it. 
and I didn't want to be in the position where I was going places and worrying about leaving my car. Penny, it seems this kind of crime is on the rise as well. It is indeed, Sophie, because Rodri's car wasn't the only car to be hit that week. Well, Matthew is back with me now. Uh, Matthew, um, tell us more about this spate of thefts, which does appear to be becoming more common. Yes, it was the 4th of December last year at around 5pm at um, outside of Fleur de Lee Rugby Club in, near to the town of Blackwood. Um, Rodri parked his car outside um, and he was, he'd gone training um, and a number of parts were removed from his vehicle. And these, these are specific parts, you know, and, and they would have required specialist tools to remove these parts and it would have taken a few minutes to do so as well. We believe there were about four or so um, other similar thefts in the area at that time. Now, if you're unlucky enough to get car parts stolen, what are your chances of ever getting them back again? It does depend. Some major car parts will have uh, the vehicle um, registration numbers marked and chassis numbers marked on the actual parts themselves. Um, there is an opportunity to stamp the, uh, the parts with your own unique reference numbers. Uh, it, it does depend on, on if that's been done or not. So what do you think has happened to these parts? Where do they end up? It's more than likely that they've been sold locally on the internet or through some trading magazine. Uh, not too sure, really, at this time. And what about uh, Rodri's case? Any progress on that one? We haven't got any leads at this moment in time, and we're keen to find out if anyone was in the area of Fleur de Lee Rugby Club at around 5 o'clock that evening, uh, and they saw somebody um, with the vehicle, um, tampering with the vehicle, that um, they come forward and let us know any, any information they have. Well, let's hope so. Matthew, thanks very much. And Sophie, let's hope that someone out there knows something about this case. Penny, thank you very much. We've got some good calls coming in already. We've got some more on those tyre slashes down in Wales. Not just three names, we've also got some addresses now as well. So we're passing that on to the police. Very excited about that. Uh, let's hope we can catch those involved. And also uh, the laptop theft we showed you on CCTV yesterday that happened in a pub in London. We've had a name put forward for someone involved in that. Yeah, absolutely. And we've also had a very interesting call about the car used in the armed robbery for the burger van. £45,000 they took. Well, we've had a call about that car and about occupants inside it. That will, of course, pass on to police. Well, that's it from us for this week. Next week on Crime Watch Roadshow, we're heading to Northumbria. And on Monday, we're out with the 999 response team. Have a look at this. Are we ready? Yeah? yeah. Guys, find out who they were after on Monday. We'll also have cases from up and down the UK. Let's hope you can help. Our lines are open all day, so please keep your calls coming in. See you Monday. Bye for now. Bye-bye.